to your annual meeting, and there's an opportunity. My my parents are wedding photographers, and to look at how they expanded part of their business years ago by just simply reaching out to those people they shot the weddings for to go, hey, time to come back and do family portraits. The family's growing. So this opportunity to realize that there's an abundant number of opportunities around and sometimes the more laser-specific we get, if you think big, it pays off big results. So to recognize that you really have that ability to create your own economy by finding where the specific need is, and as long as you have a product that can really help to resolve that, I say it's your ethical responsibility to let everybody know about it. So so how, how was the process? Now, going from being this, you know, uh, pioneer in growth using that hypnotism and bringing it from your process, your experience, your history to pen and pad the book. How, yeah. how was that? How was, was there, was there a big difference? Did you, have, did you struggle or, cause you seem to have a background in it in, in some writing. Well, I do quite a bit of education, mostly in video format, a lot of video training programs that are out there. And in the format of actually sitting down and writing an extended book. I've done smaller ebooks at times in the past. And it's where for years I was doing a lot of this, you know, yes, I'd go out and do the corporate presentation, but my business training was more focused actually in the wellness industry. So other hypnotists, I'd worked with massage therapists or acupuncturists and looking at how what was the difference that made the business work? What were the mindsets? What were the strategies? Uh, simple mindset. Too many people are blaming the platform rather than the strategy. Mm -hmm. Like they'd go, oh, I tried Facebook marketing and that didn't work. And really it's like, no, it wasn't the Facebook, it was what you did with Facebook, what really needed the adjustment. So the writing process originally began as actually a, sort of a standard self-help book. Uh, the opening chapter of the book is called The Power of Premise, of taking every reason why it's not gonna work and letting it become every reason why it is which that's, that's verbatim the change process that I guide people through in a one-to-one -one environment, whether we're in the same room, whether we're connecting by way of video conferencing around the world. And it's where over time realizing that the message as I continued to write, as I continued to brainstorm, it was morphing into a book for business. And the thought was, oh, cool, this will be a nice sort of uh, asset to have. Hi, I'm Troy McClure for the speaking. And over time it became a little bit of a, uh, love story b b around the theme of becoming the entrepreneur, of taking charge of your own career, which even for people that are not necessarily wanting to start their own business, these same principles can be applied to raise up through the ranks of a larger corporation, to stand out in a crowded marketplace. So the, the transition over time in terms of the writing of this, there's a silly nickname, and this is one of the strategies in the book, uh, of what I call mind mapping. Uh, that when I've done like mind mapping, and for those that don't know what that is, you get like a big sheet of paper and you just write words and you're connecting themes with lines and it becomes this big spider web type thing. Whenever I've tried to do that in the past, I was hitting a point of frustration because suddenly, well, I wrote this thing over here and I really wanted to be over there. And actually the, the origin story of this book is best illustrated by I'm working with this executive who's coming to my office for some, uh, for some personal issues. And he walks by, I've got a you know training space where I do a lot of classes in my local office, and there's a wall in the room that is just covered with post-its and um, you know little connecting lines from one to the other. And it seriously looked like the, the scene in uh, any sort of uh, uh, CSI TV show or the movie where they finally find the serial killer, and they find that room where there's all the photos and the articles, and they just go, oh yeah, clearly this is the person. So I finally nicknamed my mind mapping strategy the serial killer strategy because <laughs> he, oh. he saw this. That's friendly. <laughs> know, yeah, which again, uh, to, to thingify something, to look at the work that you do and give it a specific name, not just for the sake of branding it so you can talk about it to others, but it turns it into a thing that you can now label and now you can let it become more tangible. So yeah, he saw this wall and it was just covered with this insane spread of post-its and he goes – is everything all right? I go, yeah, that's a book that I'm writing. <laughs> so it's from that, you know, from that mess on the wall, uh, eventually then becoming an outline and then beginning to write from there. And uh, as I know, there's a lot of people in your audience that are maybe on that sort of beginning phase of writing. I I'd share that 
the the book you end up writing is not always the book you intend to start with. So it's where mm. original draft uh, original draft was that um, this is best illustrated by the story of a guy who came to work with me and he was having, as he put it, I'm having some motivational issues with my business. And the more I asked questions, he would give me the specifics of how it felt when he was anxious, when he was nervous. He would give me the specific, you know, stories about when he was nervous and kind of shy about talking and reaching out to new business owners and some fear of success stuff he had going on too, he worked to resolve. But like we worked together five or six times and he is reporting back outstanding feedback. And I finally have the courage to say, you realize I have no idea what you do for a living, do you? And he smiles and he goes, isn't that interesting? And I have to respond, please tell me it's legal. He goes, it's very legal. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Which he eventually <laughs> revealed it was something around um, a lot of international outsourcing and uh, buying out products that weren't selling well and resourcing them, finding a way, better way to produce them. Uh, and he goes, well, some people are offended because it's a lot of international outsourcing and I never physically interact with the products. It's just all automated for me. And I'm just sitting there going, tell me more. This sounds amazing. So I, I brought <laughs> I brought up that story in the first draft of the book because it was only then, you know, perhaps on page 200 out of 250 that I finally revealed I'm a hypnotist. To which uh, a good friend highlighted, he goes, there's a thousand business books released every month, but only one of them is coming from a hypnotist. That needs to be on the cover. That needs to be on page one. So to the message to this audience out here listening, I'd say it's to recognize what we call in business that unique selling proposition, or the nickname I like for that is that secret sauce, to recognize that there's always going to be someone else out there with a similar message to yours. You know, there's a ton of business books out there. There's and I'm really looking to fill in a gap that my two Bibles in terms of starting up my business were uh, looking at Tim Ferriss, Four Hour Work Week, and especially Michael Gerber, E Myth Revisited. Yet there was a little place in the middle that I felt I needed something more, and that's what I've looked to fill in with Work Smart Business. It's to recognize that it's your unique perspective, it's your story. So the more you can own, this is who I am, this is what I've done, and this is why I'm telling the story. Because chances are, whether it's a business book, whether it's a self-help book, whether it's a how-to book of any style, or hey, even if it's a novel, a creative piece of fiction, there's something that you have to share. There's some experience that you have. And for that person out there who picks up your book and realizes this is that one thing I needed to hear, this is the one way I needed to look at this issue differently, or how we started this conversation, this one way of looking at the rapport dialogue differently, I can use that. I can put that to use right away. That's when that reach of what you do expands even further. So the, the, the simple outline of it was a bit of a crazy mind mapping strategy to a more formal outline and then writing and rewriting. Uh, the, the writer, director, Judd Apatow, behind so many of the big movies nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, it's a quote that I heard of his that really helped me out along the way that writing is rewriting. So the first draft was just simply getting it on the screen, getting it out of my brain, onto the screen, reading it out loud, out loud several times over, and just looking at it and just realizing this is what I need it to be. And along the same way, too, revisiting some of those things that inspired me, not for the sake of, how do I model this and make it my own? No. Instead, to go, what was my original passion point? And it's where to recognize that inspiration can come from outside sources. As much as, yes, there's the Simpsons uh, dialogue inside of the book, there's stories of inspiration coming from the people who play video games. They keep at the game for so long until they finally figure it out, and then they win. I mean, that's every bit of physical exercise. That's every bit of ongoing improvement. Um, even though I'm not really a direct marketing kind of person, uh, one of the chapters practically becomes a love story about the history of uh, the amazing inventor and infomercial star, Ron Popeil. I mean, the, close the door of the Showtime Rotisserie Grill, set it and forget it. <laughs> and looking at every aspect of the business by going, how do I replicate this like a system so I can just set it and forget it? Um, I listen to comedy programs, comedy podcasts, the, the Kevin Pollack chat show. Uh, to look at him, I mean, he took his career as a character actor, a stand-up comedian, doing amazing impersonations, and then launched his podcast. 
And I heard him say many years ago, if you're not creating, you're waiting. So to recognize, you know, to turn that back to Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich. How many references can I drop in one paragraph here? <laughs> to look at, back to what Napoleon Hill <laughs> referred to as that burning desire. And to recognize that, no, it's a burning desire not just for me to put the book out there for my own benefit, but it's instead that there's too many people that are struggling and just that one piece of knowledge, just one way of looking at something differently. So, yeah, let me listen to a hypnotist talk about how he built a multiple six-figure hypnosis business. Huh. <laughs> so, all right. I mean, you can't, you know, I mean, you pretty much touched everything a writer could possibly – need in one book i mean then that's one thing i, I kind of stress to uh because I, I do i do a lot of consulting a lot of teaching as well for creative writers and and uh you know help i try to help people develop their sense of style sense of self within the content and if they treat it a lot like a business you know you find a lot more success well i mean it's where again you know I mean? back to influence you're always influencing and even so, you're always selling. And even if you sell a product, you're still selling the product once they're inside of it. I mean, it's where to look at the structure of your book, to look at any good novel, any good movie, they're selling you on the fact to keep watching. I mean, it's the, it's the Gary Vaynerchuk line around we're day trading attention, that we're giving that reason to keep going. So to recognize that, you know, what are those smaller steps we can break the process into? Okay, so it began as the principles and strategies, the principles for success and the strategies to make it happen. And the original draft was, uh, what was it, the 12 principles. And then I looked at the 12 and went, oh, wait, I can combine these two and that one's really not that necessary. Okay, so 11. No, wait, it doesn't need a number. <laughs> and it's the, uh, <laughs> the scene from Mel Brooks' History of the World Part 1, uh, Moses on the Mount, 15 commandments, and then one shatters. Oh, 10. <laughs> and to recognize that there's places where we have to define what it is, but I set the goal of going, I want at least 12 to be in there in the first pass, but then realizing it wasn't the number, it was the content that mattered. So again, what you start with is not necessarily what ends up being, because I went for that final draft of the book from from the journey of kind of bearing the lead that I was the hypnotist uh, to this was the lesson of that. I was trying to fit in and I was trying to represent myself as something that I, I was, but I was trying to be the community rather than stand out as the unique voice. And it was instead, as soon as I fully embraced unique voice, unique perspective, this is why you need to read this. That's where it really took off. And that's, and there's a lot, there's a lot of good stuff in there that can grow professionally uh, as far as branding, I mean, it's pretty much for every avenue of business, and it's it's unique because it comes from a hypnotist. Which you know, no, I don't mean that in a, in a derogatory sense, but you know, you wouldn't expect such substance to come out of something, you know, from somebody who's spent their career hypnotizing until you really stop and look into it. And I, I really do. I, I say, I tell anyone who, like, all my listeners, all my future listeners, people looking in. Anyone who's kind of just even skating by, do not miss out on that free digital copy because I've read a good chunk already. I've been spending all weekend kind of thumbing through, and and I, I've picked up a lot uh, understanding of not just myself, understanding of my businesses, of my podcasting, and how to grow just from work smart business, lessons learned from hypnotizing 250,000 people and building a million-dollar brand. That is a mouthful, but it's fun to say. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never you'll never hear somebody say lessons learned from hypnotizing two hundred fifty thousand people. Well, I share this too. That line. to look at <laughs> to look at again. Sometimes as you're writing, and for those of you that are out there in that sort of startup phase of writing something, sometimes it's only again back to Judd Apatow. Writing is rewriting. Sometimes in that final pass, suddenly you're typing away at something or narrating something, whatever your strategy becomes, and you suddenly land on a sentence and you realize. Oh, that's the book. And then it, yes, drives the point to have to then go back through the other, you know, 45,000 plus <laughs> words and rewrite it everything because suddenly you hit the thesis, the thesis statement you start with. The same as, you know, in, in science. The hypothesis they begin at the beginning, they start with the beginning, is not necessarily the finding of the results of research at the end of it. So to bring in this flexible nature that 
um, you know, uh, of where we start. It's where, as I do, as even as I